Good morning. This is Pastor Garam. The beautiful morning is another day that the Lord has made, and we should rejoice and be glad in it. ABC family, I trust everyone wherever you are, you are well and you are strong in the Lord. Here to bring you a message of encouragement even through these trying times. Today, I want to share a word with us from a topic the God who is bigger than our situations. There are many kind of situations or trials, or tribulation, like we may try to liken it to storms. Like from the story of, we read from the book of Luke, chapter 8, verse 22 through 26. We will read from the book of Luke, chapter 8, verse 22 through 26. In our context, or in our text, the disciples find themselves in a terrible storm. Now many times storms catch us when we are not expecting them. This was probably true for the disciples as this storm came even when Jesus was with them in the ship. But in this story, Jesus reveals himself as the God who is bigger than our storms. And I think our view of God is very important because how we view God will determine how we view ourselves. And this morning, I am sure that all of us know that God is bigger than our storms but if you are like me you just sometimes need to be reminded one thing is for sure in this story the storm was not as big to Jesus as it was to the disciples and even though the storm was above their head, it was still under his feet. But wait a minute, in what way is God bigger than our storms? There are five principles in our text that answer this. Number one, <clears throat> his intention is bigger than our storms. As we look at Luke chapter 8 and verse 22, Jesus had a plan. And what was the plan? It was for him and his disciples to make it to the other side of the lake. That was God's plan. We as human beings have failed in our intentions, haven't we? Have we ever determined to help someone one day, but when all we said and done, we didn't help at all? Have you ever set out to do good deed? only to end up not doing it we shall or we have all failed in our intentions but god has never failed 
in his intentions. God's plan cannot be altered with or his plan never fail. In Philippians 1 6 he says being confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ uh, now we may never go through a literal storm on the sea of Galilee but we do go through various storms of life your storm may be when someone you love dearly dies unexpectedly and you don't understand it it may be when you your job is not going the way you need it to go it could be when you feel betrayed by those you love and no one understands your heartache our storm can be when life has us so confused we don't know where to turn or what to do it may even be when Satan whispers in your ears it is no use it will never work you may as well give up what can we do when heartache comes knocking on our door and we feel overcome by despair or bound by a feeling of hopelessness we start by realizing that God has a plan and his plan is greater than our feelings and his intention is bigger than any storm I don't understand it or I don't fully understand why I've got a speech like this but I am glad for one thing I am glad that I know that God has a plan for me and that his plan for me is bigger than any storm I'll ever experience do you believe that The second thing I want us to look at is this. His interpretation is bigger than our storm. As we look in the, in the book of Luke chapter 8 and verse 23. Jesus is asleep in the storm and evidently has been asleep for a good while. Isn't that strange? How could Jesus sleep through a storm? The disciples literally through thought they were dying. Obviously, the storm was not as big to Jesus as it was to the disciples. I wonder, do we sleep? good when problems are consuming us I don't when problems consume me I have a hard, hard time sleeping so do you know what I do I just lay awake and help God run the world <laughs> the disciples interpreted this storm as something terrible the fact is they could not change their circumstances there was absolutely nothing there was absolutely nothing they could do about the storm and that's hard to deal with sometimes, isn't it? 
Do you ever wish you could change your circumstances? I do, but we can't. We may as well accept that. We need to realize that God doesn't see the storm the way we see the storm. His interpretation is bigger than our storm. Isaiah 55 verse 8 through 9 tells us, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heaven are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God sees the storm as a means of advancement. He sees storms of life to test us, to help us get closer to Him. God uses dark, scary, uncertain times of life as an opportunity for Him to demonstrate His power to us and for God to get the glory, not us. God wants to use our trials to get us a little closer to Him. I wonder when our storm starts to devastate us, do we want to take God's interpretation of our storm or do we want to just develop our own interpretation? When trouble comes down on us, do we carelessly say like some? God doesn't care or he do he doesn't do something for me he doesn't do anything for me but problems are sometimes just opportunity in work clothes he is testing our faith we must not forget faith is taking God at his word despite the circumstances I'll say that again Faith is taking God at His word despite the circumstances. And faith is often claiming God's promise in the midst of bad circumstances. Like the disciples, we may be in a terrible storm. We may be so scared that we are biting our nails off. But it's good to know that God's not biting his nails off because his interpretation is bigger than our storms. Number three, his inclination is bigger than our storm. Luke 8, 23 to 24. When the Bible says the ship was filled with water, it means they were losing control of the ship and the water was controlling the ship rather than the boat controlling the boat. The storm was controlling the boat. The word jeopardy, jeopardy indicates that they fear death. They thought it's over, but they did the right thing. They went to Jesus and while they were literally going down, Jesus was rising up. Jesus arose, but not the way I would have arose. Have you ever been awakened suddenly and unexpectedly from a deep sleep? Our normal response is to be startled, bewildered, confused, to rub the sound out of the eyes, right? However, Jesus didn't do that. He arose immediately. He inclined himself to them. The first portion of, of that area I want us to consider is his inclination is to hear us. That is that that is his nature. Immediately Jesus inclined himself to them. God's, God is never in such a deep sleep that he doesn't hear our 
faintest whisper. Aren't you glad for that? Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says, Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. God one has to call on him. One amazing thing that doctors have verified is that a mother often has a special ear for her baby's cry. Mother can often distinguish their own baby's cry in a room of crying babies. What in the world for me and most men, one child's cry is the same as another. If you've heard one, you've heard them all, but not to a mother. Why? Because God made her with a special ear for her baby. She is inclined to hear her baby. But that pill in compassion with God's ear, the cry of his children. Psalm 34, verse 17, 17 through 18. Psalm 34, verse 17 through 18 says, The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to those who have broken heart and saves such as have I contrite spirit. In your trouble, cry out to God. He is waiting for you. On the same subject, the second thing we look at is his inclination is to help us. Although Jesus was sleeping, I think the disciples misunderstood the nature of his sleep. They even evidently thought that sleeping meant that he was unaware of their present danger or that he was unconcerned for their personal lives or maybe he was unable to make the difference that they needed. But Jesus was no less God when he was asleep than when he is awake. Jesus was no less God when he was lying down than when he was standing up. He rebuked the wind and storm, produced calm. Psalm 34 verse 19 says, Many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. No matter how dark our life may seem, we must believe the truth that his inclination is bigger than our storm. And number four in our subject today is his intervention is bigger than our storm. Luke 8.25 these disciples had seen other miracles before, but notice what they said. What manner of man is this? The way he intervened was unreal. They were saying, it is not human. Let me ask you something. If God can, con can control the wind and waves, do you think he can control your storm? If God can alter the very laws of nature, I believe he can help me with my problem. Don't you? There is no storm too big for God to handle. Do you believe that even the wind recognizes, recognized his authority and the storm was just a platform for him to do his work on? Romans 8.28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and those who are called according to His purpose. I don't understand how He does it, but God can even use the junk in my life to bring glory to Him. God desires to use everything that happens to us for our good and God's glory. Do you believe that He can do 
that in your life. Thank God that His intervention is bigger than our storms. Number five, His instructions is bigger than our storms. The disciples learned something through the storm that they might not have learned any other way. They learned something about their faith. Luke 8, 25. When Jesus asked them, where is your faith? He asked a good question. I don't know where their faith was, but I know where it was. In. Their faith may have been in the size of the boat to withstand the storm. Their faith may have been in their ability to outthrow the storm. Their faith may have been in the strength of their anchor. I don't know where they faith, their faith was, but I do know where it wasn't. It wasn't in Christ. They learned something about their faith from the storm and we do too. When God sends a storm my way, I see how many different things I've been learning on, I've been leaning on I mean. What if Jesus asked us this morning, where is your faith? Some will have to answer, my father is in my circumstances, being just right. But they are rarely. Uh, others will confess that their faith is in people responding just so, but they rarely do. Some people's faith is only in the pleasures that this life can offer, but their soul should live. Many only have faith in their finances and in things money can buy, but they don't satisfy. Second thing on that segment is, they learned something about their future, Luke 8, 26. They didn't get to the other side. God wasn't through with them yet. He had something else for them beyond the storm. And when the storms the life beat down on us, we need to realize that there is life beyond the storm. God is not finished with us yet. In this conclusion, we need to realize that God is in control of everything. God is aware everything that is happening in our surrounding today. God is aware of the virus that is tormenting, that has put the world at standstill, that has collected everybody's attention to one place. God is aware of all this. As you've realized, Many countries are on, are on lockdown. We are not going to church today. We are fellowshipping from home with our families, with our neighbors, or still to mention the social distance. This is our prayer today. But the Lord will see us through this storm. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your peace, O oh God. Sometimes, when we are in storm, we are distracted, and we immediately forget that you are able to deliver us from any kind of situation, O oh God. Today, may our hearts rest knowing that you are able and you will see us through this storm. Guide us and help us, O oh God, 
May our hearts not faint. May we not forget the benefits of our salvation, O God. May we continue standing strong. May we continue being strong in prayer. May we continue, continue seeking after Thee, Lord, so that we may not lose our focus, O God. Be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, EVC family. Stay strong. May the Lord bless you. Amen.